for the critical path, for example, and at the moment it's January, but you have drag and drop the new submission. This is gonna pop up as a new line. So you will need to change that and, and select that, that, the newest one, right? So let's do that. And we are gonna stop at there because it's been quite a lot for you to process. Um, tomorrow we're gonna continue with this. We're gonna do quite more about XCI because I want you to, to create visuals with me on this. And we, we want to review some of the calculations as well. So, so you are kind of knowledgeable how, how these calculations are, are, are brought together. Um, but in this case, the, the last thing I want to do now is just do a quick uh, update of this dashboard, right? So this is a process, it's quite simple. So in the LMS, you have one more XCR file that is a corresponding, the continuous uh, update corresponding to February. So the last one was January, now we have February, right? So you need to download this one, have that and paste it on the, on the folder. In my case, I have that, I think already in my Explorer. So you're just gonna go back to my Explorer over here. Uh, is this folder. So here the W3 project has up to January, right? But I want to bring this February. I, I already got that in this W3 copy because I have much more uh, updates in here. So I want to keep this one uh, February 21, okay? In my case, I'm just gonna do a copy and I'm gonna paste it in here. Try to do the same guys, so, so you can actualize this together with me. So we're gonna copy this new Excel file here, right? And the only uh, extra thing we need to do is go back to our uh, dashboard and, and we just want to refresh, that's it. We don't need to any extra, we don't need to go back to the uh, Power Query transformation, make sure there is something missing, no. Everything's been taken care of. So we just go and refresh this one. Right? We just need to make sure that uh, this BI file that you're using is pointing to that same folder, right? That I presume you have already uh, done in the past. So once this com is completed, the only things that are gonna start changing is the filters. So I will need to go from January to February to see the new, the new data point, the new values. So that's been done, but this value hasn't been refreshed unless I go here and I click my February that just pop up right now because it found, it found this new, new line. So everything is, is gonna be corrected to, to those values. So you see now this value is, is correlated to the February. So I have 49 days buffer of time and this is my terminal float uh, comparing my deterministic date against my P80 that's coming from the, from the risk. The schedule uh, quality in January, uh, I didn't highlight that, but it was quite good standing point, 87%. But you see now that the, the quality has dropped to 78. Uh, and then you have these WBS levels. So you can go and find what levels are kind of uh, in the worst shape. So I can see this level and I can uh, open this one, drill down. I see, okay, all these ones, but for example, Hill House compound this is very poorly managed so far. And I can uh, keep drilling down those uh, and start seeing which are the, the most kind of poorly managed uh, WBSs in terms of shell quality. And that is just to spot in a really quick way uh, where are my missing points? But then you, this is just a summary. So the idea would be that you will have a, another tab to go, if you need so, you will go in more detail uh, to analyze uh, what is happening with that overall uh, shuttle. So in here, as I haven't selected any update, it's giving me the, the average, the overall um, schedule quality for all my, my XR files that are in that folder at the moment. But if I want to check that February update, right? So then I will see here 79% uh, or 78%. Um, and I can check what I'm missing, right? So I have really high total floats values. Uh, hydration is over the DCM 
DSM uh, recommended value. And lags are missing logic are, are just fine, but these two I'm worried about, and then I can check where I need to find them. So uh, if I go here, float uh, over 44 days, uh, 3,000 activity, that was really horrible. So I can drill down here and I keep uh, looking at that WBS levels. I see 2,000 here. I keep looking there uh, until I'm kind of fully content with where I need to uh, address those issues. So you see critical path is showing me the, the critical path of January, but okay, that's good. But now I want to see what is the new critical path. And probably I can see here is also kind of counting the number of critical path uh, activities for each WBS. Um, so I see that I have uh, 52 in the integrated program, uh, 10 in the tender uh, activity for estimate estimating activities. So I want to see if that changes uh, in the new update, right? So in the critical path have kind of uh, uh, gone a different way. And I can see here, so these are all that you see here, AP design and these are risk uh, activities. These are governance that belongs to estimate activities. So those are the ones that are telling me in, in these two columns. But now if I want to check on February, I will select February. And now the GAN that is gonna show me is a different view of things. Now, if you compare this exactly with the P6, it's gonna give you exactly the same. And this has been, again, tested uh, over and over again. And it's giving you exactly the same values that you will get from P6 when you filter by critical activities. Um, this is critical activity with zero, zero value float. Uh, and you see AIP design, you have all these activities. Um, is basically everything that goes below this WBS. But then you have also 16 activities now in tender. So now if I go see here, it's gonna be my 16 activities in tender uh, display on the Gantt chart. Um, and then that's only when I want to see the most critical path, but ha what happens if I want to see what is coming next? I go to five day float and I'm gonna have this route that I may want to uh, start kind of taking a look a look at in the next period submission.